Yeah, I'm Ava Rogers. I am crowdfunding director for Rem Alternus, which means I have been the uh, face behind the curtains for a lot of Kickstarters that we've been doing recently, including this one. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm Bill Keys. Uh, I am the uh, creator and writer of Blood and Justice and um, Nocturne by Night, our current Kickstarter, the, the book that we're currently kickstarting. Um, and yeah, just happy to be here. I am Jennifer Scheinfeld, and I am the CEO of Mobius Rolls Publishing. I am the one who's well, yeah, I guess CEO is pretty well summing it up. Making sure that Bill has his platform to get this out to you all. <laughs> I don't know if I did. So. I think. <laughs> I think I'm. Oh, I'm muted. I'm, oh, cool. I'm down in the boiler room, shoveling coal into the into the <laughs> engine. <laughs> cool. I was muted that whole time, so that's cool. Um, <laughs> I'm so done. All right. Uh, well, let's get started. You you heard you heard everyone that mattered anyway. It's fine, um, and you didn't hear my crappy analogy. So. Uh, <laughs> Pigeon, how about you? Hey, yes, I'm uh, Pigeon, and I am the Chief Operating Officer of Evo Mobius World's Publishing. I suck. Um, and yes, Pigeon is the coup of Mobius World's Publishing, and that was not planned, that acronym. And uh, I also teach at Colorado State University, and the reason I mention that is because I study the politics of game settings, game worlds, and I use it in Mobius. I bring it back for fun purposes. That's cool. I don't think I knew that. And I need to talk to you about something after this, but yeah. Yeah. We yeah. Can talk about it now. We got time. It, yeah. It's unannounced um, and in very initial stages of planning. So I don't want, I don't want to give that part away. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll talk. We'll talk. We'll talk amongst ourselves. Um, Sweet. But since I was muted, hi guys, I'm Rem. Uh, I'm the CEO of Rem Alternus Productions, and uh, we're here to drive some excitement toward the Kickstarter. We are $354 away from funding, which is phenomenal. Maybe we'll do it right here on stream, and we can all be very excited and cheer together. Um, it'd be great. Uh, and yeah, we're just here to talk and chat about whatever comes up. So. Uh, if you have questions about Mobius, questions about publishing, questions about world building, questions about Kickstarter running, questions about our favorite foods. Uh, I know I know Jen just hosted a Hobbit feast day. Um, we could talk about food. Oh, it's a really important holiday. I Listen, I've never celebrated and it's like whatever religion this is, I'm joining. Um, so <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> um, so, I really wanted to have a holiday that did not revolve around religion. <laughs> oh, okay. And, you know, and did not revolve around compulsory gift giving or compulsory inviting that person that you really don't want at your house. And, you know, just, I wanted it to be an opportunity and it's actually become one of our biggest holidays. Um, that my family and friends celebrate is just the opportunity to share in each other's time, each other's company, each other's, you know, efforts of making awesome hobbity foods. And yeah, I, I love yeah. that idea. And everything you said is um, phenomenal. I'm part of this non religion religion. <laughs> well, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. We might have to get like cards printed up or something. <laughs> Excellent. Um, all right. So <laughs> what else is out there, guys? We've we've done intros. Um, we are, again, at the um, $354 from funding. So, hey, if you've pledged, thank you. Up your pledge, please. 
<laughs> and uh, there's actually benefits to upping your pledge now, right? Like if you're at the $10 level, Ava, right? Right? Yes. Right? Tell me more. Yes. Uh, if you back at the $25 level or above, or $20 if you got in the first couple days and got the early bird price, um, we will be sending everybody that gets a physical book a book plate signed by Bill Keys. Ooh. Now, book plate is just a really easy way to get your book signed without having to ship it to him and then ship it back to everybody else because you get the book from drive through rpg and then the book plate will be sent separately so only ship twice don't have to worry about messing about with that and then you just stick it in the front of your book and you got your book signed that's pretty awesome now now tell me more about who this this bill keys is as you say well, what, I think you might want to ask him. What, why, why, does, <laughs> why do I want his words on a page? Because he's he the, the book. evil bunny. <laughs> the <laughs> evil bunny? Yes. Yeah. Tell me more. That's Everyone toot Bill's horn. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know what his wife would say about that. That's really <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, oh, where'd my video go? Come back. <laughs> come, come. Um, I mean, saying like I'm bragging or whatever. So, I somebody else say, say something nice. <laughs> Hold on, I might have lost I mean, us on Zoom. Uh oh, where did we go? Oh, it minimized. That's why. Okay, I fixed it. Sweet. Yay. Oh, and and Bree the tired in chat. Hi, Bree. She said something nice literally about bill so <laughs> and hey we just went up we're at six thousand two hundred fifty one dollars we are 249 dollars away from funding guys yes look at you Woo! thank you uh but yeah okay, so back to every bill. time ava moves her head to the right this little bunny shows through the blur in like the little space between her headset and her head Oh, yeah. I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's actually a bee. Oh my goodness, he's adorable. I love him. I have to. Is they're made out of slightly different. Is that is that a softer? Is that a Janity? No, this is from somebody up here in Seattle in a writing server. Oh, room. cool, neat. Well, don't make them spooky. It's, oh, this is that's so odd. I'm a, Don't I make had them a spooky bumblebees, because then you would have boobies. <laughs> oh, we uh, show off our plushies that we have by our. Yeah, by heck our yeah, let's do it. <laughs> nice. We're here for whatever. Yeah. My little shark. Oh. Oh. Do, do, do. I have a chipmunk. Oh. I have. I have an owl. All bears. my chickens are in my office at, on campus. <laughs> yeah, I have oh. Umbreon. These are my three little guys that I have next to my desk. Aww. Oh my goodness, those are heckin' adorable. I have an imp by Janet T. Craft Lily. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. Uh, she does. He has an axolotl. Oh, I do God. have an axolotl. He was oh, made by a girl I used to work with. That's awesome. A homemade axolotl. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So this... actually, I'll, I will say something nice about Bill. Okay, yeah, we kind about of uh, uh, avoided that to show off stuffed animals. So, <laughs> hey, yeah. that was a work. That was a worthy cause. Um, so yeah, Bill's the, he's the literally the big daddy rabbit, the evil bunny who wrote this, you know, <laughs> and the setting, the nocturne setting. Um, so I was uh, it's. Uncle Pigeon's going to tell a quick story. So I was in the military for 25 years. Five of that was in the army and three of those years stationed in Louisiana. And knowing that Nocturne is um, a uh, New Orleans like setting. I mean, it just having been in Louisiana, you know, and toured around the state. I mean, it feels authentic. Like when, we, when I play with Bill, he makes it's, it's dark, it's wet. It's uh, oppressive. It's a very, very uh, sensual setting. Sensual, that's a good word. Um, <laughs> so it's very, um, I know, you know, people come there to play the supers, like I want to be a hero. But now they're immersed in this very rich setting that um, you got to play it. 
you gotta play it and these new villains uh <laughs> some of them are quite creepy actually bill what the, the what's who's the name of the villain again basically on the cover the the gentleman who's dancing uh that's um crypt crypt that's right I, I, i'll admit that any every time i see that picture i think of you in that pose <laughs> amazing <laughs> yep Yep. Um, I I love uh yeah I and and if I'm understanding right, Prowlers and Paragons Ultimate Edition, Blood and Justice, uh, Welcome to Nocturne and Nocturne by Night. That is all of the literature out there that exists on Nocturne, right? Yes. So mm -hmm. that means that as pigeon to what you said, like as as deep and gritty as it is, like you don't have to read 300 novels in order to get caught up on the lore yeah which is really nice hey we have questions in chat okay so Finn hall i hope i'm saying your name right uh has a serious question so i'm going to say it seriously after nocturne by night what's the next project kickstarter in the queue i i actually know that one hey <laughs> <laughs> yay they asked a question i know yeah. <laughs> um the next project in the queue for us is going to be a brand spanking new setting to be published um that is actually not it's not so much superheroes as it is superhero adjacent in the fact that the premise is that everyone starts as a normal human being tm and then they get dumped into the well of the worlds Ooh, i'm super dun, dun, dun. excited for this one i know it's actually a really amazing setting i had the honor and pleasure of playing through this with uh the writer michael sorbrook who's written 147 things and has won a bajillion awards and is just an amazing writer um but he has fleshed out this world so well, and it's completely different. It's, you know, it's a parallel world to our own, but not quite. And you can grow into having powers. Ooh. And that's all I'm going to say about that right now. But officially, our next big project our next kick is going to be well of the worlds by michael sorbrook Woo! there you go that's really exciting i cannot wait so also if you're around rem alternus we might be starting a campaign like jennifer was talking about here on our channel regularly come the new year -ish, <sighs> somewhere around q1 that's so that to run it for me <laughs> What was that, yeah, Joe? No, setting, so you can see what it's like. You can see it played. Maybe you know. I don't know how you guys are running. Maybe some of the fans could actually be you know participating. Heck in, yeah! Or, oh heck yeah! yeah. Rotating that uh, cast. Fun. That'd be fun. Um, I personally, based on what you just said, Jen, just imagine making a character that is me that starts getting powers, and then I can live all my fantasies. And that's actually. <laughs> kind of exactly what it is in the sense of it's um, the world's spoiler alert. Shh. Um, the powers come from a bit of wish fulfillment. Ooh. So I love what that. Did you, the character always wish you had <laughs> magic powers and then that starts manifesting in this world. That's really cool. So, yeah. You know what else that we've 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 wished on that is uh fulfilling? We just went up again. We're now at yes! $6,281. So math, that is um $219 away from funding. That hey guys, we can do it. We can do it. You yes. you know, if one person who hasn't pledged yet pledges at the level where you can have a villain created, like your character created for Nocturne by Night and put into the book, we'd be fine. We'd make it. Or, Ava, correct me if I'm wrong, the level where you get to play with Bill. 
Is that a thing as well? I think that one's 150. That one's 150. So if two okay. people play in, in with Bill, which, I mean, Pigeon just gave a uh, glowing endorsement of, <laughs> we're there. And to be fair, I will say that I've worked with Bill for years now, and I mean, Evil Bunny and, you know, all of the carnage aside, like, if you just sort of push the bodies off and, like, don't mind the little, little <laughs> the squelching in the carpet. <laughs> <laughs> By far, I gotta say, this man is one of the most professional and authentic writers and creators that I've ever met. Oh. He's really got things well laid out. He's well thought out. Um, and, and it doesn't matter if it's for Prowlers and Paragons, if it's for Savage Worlds, whatever. He does really solid work, y'all. So you will not come into something and be like, yeah, but where's the, this doesn't make sense, or this contradicts later on. That's not going to happen with Bill's work. It's just not. That's amazing. And that is the answer to the question I asked right at the beginning about why do I want this dude's name on a book plate? So why should I up my pledge? It's some really solid quality work. <laughs> yeah. That's really because cool. cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so neat. And thank you all in chat for being so active and and supportive and clearly uh bill's got some fans in chat um uh, and <laughs> well, we can't see the chat so help us out yes oh I'll, I'll i'll read some of these for you but in the meantime while i read through these if any of you are in uh the mobius discord channel or the rem alternus discord channel um the the call is open we we do have a, a password protected for against real evil people but um if you want in just uh let me know let us know on either channel and we'll send you the invite and you can hang out with us and ask your questions and and contribute and maybe show us your plushies maybe we'll ask another like what's on your desk question i like those um <laughs> so yeah let's see here we've got um uh robert dorf uh says bill is a mad bunny an evil bunny bunny uh, Mad bunny. Bunny. Creator said, "Put bunny. Uh, should put bunny in your name on the on the Zoom." Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Creator twenty two hundred ninety ninth. Uh, I have to whisper this one because we're it's a secret. Okay, up to my pledge. Don't tell the wife. He. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love that. How do I Thank, tell? You. <laughs> Thank you. Thank um, you. Robert says Crypt is a fantastic character. Uh, Bree says, uh, I like that name, Crypt. Uh, that's a nice name. Um, uh, Robert says, Crypt is a sort of dancing zombie necromancer, great villain for a lighter adventure. We actually got to play a game with Bill running it, um, uh, that's on our YouTube channel, um, that has Crypt as the villain. So you should check that out. Uh, maybe Ava, when she's back at her desk, can drop the link while I'm going through this. Um, oh, I'm here. I just turned my camera off because I'm eating. Oh, okay, cool. If you can drop the link <laughs> to the YouTube vid, that'd be great. Um, yeah, let me find it. Uh, Finhall said, I'm playing in a uh, Well of the Worlds game now, and yeah, it's extremely cool. Yeah, he's playing Ollie, isn't he? Neato. Uh, to get to play uh, early in that. Um, this is my plushie. <laughs> oh, that's the best plushie. I've got a plushie sleeping at my feet right now, so I'm not going to disturb the plushie. Uh, he, he wanted to make sure that everyone knew that this is the very best boy. Oh, This is Lord Emperor Rocco. <laughs> I love the sweater. Well, that's because he's an old man and he gets cold very easily. Oh, babies. Babies. Yeah. Um... All right, let's see what else. Uh, on page 37 of Welcome to Nocturne book, there's a map of Nocturne. Uh, any chance of getting a bigger version released on drive-thru? Like a big printout? Yeah. Like that. That'd be kind of cool. That'd be cool. We could do uh, that. A bigger version. No? The map, yes. Actually, it is something that I created recently um, that went out to our Patreons. Um, that is a description of all of where all of the different wards of Nocturne are, um, which basically it's a map which shows all the borders of the different um, uh, the wards, the, the political divisions of the city. Neato. Um, 
it's there. Um, so that is a Patreon. And it will be released to the public at some point. Yeah. In the meantime, Pigeon, can you give Rem the link to the Patreon so oh, yeah. that mm -hmm. then it can go out on the Twitch? Heck yeah. yeah! I I mean I would, but I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. All right, what else? Uh, oh, uh, from Robert, what are a couple of your favorite Nocturne memories? I think I think probably everyone can answer that uh, on this call now because we've all played in Nocturne at this point. So, so Bill, how about you as uh, the reigning GM and creator? Favorite Nocturne memories? Wow, I've run this game many 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 times over the years. Um, different different campaigns, different heroes, um, different situations. Um, and I'm currently running a game also uh, in set in Nocturne. Oh, favorite moments. Um, gosh, we had a, a great moment where um, they were fighting. Uh, there, there's a villain group in the Nocturne by Night, in the um, yeah Nocturne by Night book mm -hmm. that are called the Clean Flame, and they're basically uh, they all wear um, powered armor, kind of like uh, low rent Iron Man, but they're also all um, like white supremacists. Ooh. So they're really they are, in my opinion, they are the worst villains in the entire book. Um, but the uh, the heroes were fighting them, and uh, they um, they just they absolutely hate each other. <laughs> the the two groups, and uh, my heroes ended up uh, kicking the asses of the uh, of the cleansing flame. Ended up um, almost killing one of the the bad guys, and it was just such a cathartic moment for everybody when they you know they they ended up driving these guys off, sending them crying back home to mama and it was it was such a cathartic moment everybody was just laughing and cheering and it was a, a great tabletop moment that's awesome oh i love that uh jen how about you um mine is actually more of a back end thing that i really love and that was reading through and doing an editing pass on some of the work and I actually kind of got really caught up in this story about, you know, it was, it wasn't pirates. It was um, like the Sultan's brother because it was for the Sultan's treasure, I think. And it was like the different mm -hmm. choose your own adventure mm -hmm. of what actually happened to the treasure. Ooh. So actually, that is a supplement, a uh, little module that's out on drive through the Sultan's Adventure or the Sultan's Treasure um, that is set in Nocturne that I loved because I, I love, love, love that on all of his modules, Bill puts in um, story seeds. You know, well, what if you do this? Well, what if you do this? And it sort of becomes like a game of Clue, the end of the movie Clue. And you can almost and you know, but then like your brain goes off in all these different directions and you can get so creative. And just reading through that particular one, I loved the places that Bill gave me permission to go as a storyteller. Oh neat. So yeah, I would say that that's my favorite memory for Nocturne. Cool. Pigeon. Oh yes. Um, so there I was, uh, playing the character Shadow's Smile in, uh, uh at, um, <laughs> yeah, what, what uh, Tacticon, right? Oh, Not yeah. Tacticon, uh, Beacon, Beacon, mm -hmm. uh, with Bill. And, uh, he, had, uh, Shadow's Smile, if it's basically could use darkness to move around very quickly, uh, around the map. And oh. there was a... Um, crypt was coming through with a parade. There's all these people behind him. There's all these cars. And, and I asked Bill and I said, can I use my power to actually just suddenly appear in the front seat of the front car with my arms around the two people sitting there and going, Hey, what's up? And he just, <laughs> uh, his eyebrow twitched and he said, absolutely. <laughs> and, uh, 
<laughs> I basically stopped the entire parade doing that. And it was glorious. It was absolutely glorious. Neat. Yeah. I, I love, uh, we got to play with you playing Shadow Smile, which was really neat. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. Ava, how uh, about. Probably, oh, go I'll ahead. I'll probably not play him, that character, forevermore. Oh. I mean, maybe I'll make my own eventually, but I love playing Shadow Smile. That's awesome. <laughs> and Ava, how about you? And Shadow Smile um, is one of the characters. Oh. oh, go ahead, Bill. I need time to think. <laughs> I was I was going to say Shadow Smiles is, is one of the characters in the original Welcome to Nocturne book. He's one of the NPCs, um, more example characters. Um, cool. Several of the characters in that book are actually were PCs that were in previous games that I ran. So Shadow Smile was one of them, and um, uh, Speed Angel, and uh, Troubleshooter, and um, Sister Salvation. Um, a lot of the NPCs in the book were actually player characters in previous campaigns. Oh, neat. Well, I'm, I apologize to the player character or to the player that had speed angel and what I, I did to them, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, Ava, I think they would have appreciated it. Oh, good. I'm glad. <laughs> Ava, how about you? Okay. I'm going to preface this with the fact that I suffer from a really bad, uh, CRS. Uh, can't remember shit. <laughs> so all of the games have kind of almost blended together for me. So I'm going to kind of go outside that. And the character creation has been just, with Prowlers and Paragons, is just amazing. I love it. And it was fun figuring out how to build John Wick as a Prowlers and Paragons character. And then I got to play Jane Wick in the one shot we did over on the Restless Barbarians channel. <laughs> And it was just, all of that was just great. Neat. That's awesome. Um, all right. So for me, I've played in two now, right? Like the, the one with Crypt and the one with um, uh, um, Restless Barbarian. Um, I think one of, the th one of the things I really like about the system is I do not have a mind for new rule systems. Like that's part of what stops me from getting into new games is I'm like, uh, rules and crunch and eh, I just want to play a character and like, tell me what to roll. I'm very happy. Um, and, and like, let me lean into that character. And I think that this does that really well where, gosh, the one we did with Crypt, I literally didn't open the character sheet until we were on stream. And uh, <laughs> like, as I, I read more like, on the fly about the character, it would say things like, um, like even just the name Speed Angel. Uh, and it said like her, one of her, um, her descriptors was that she's naive. And I'm like, I can do that. Um, <laughs> and like loves to be the center of attention and a uh, uh, circus performer, former circus performer and stuff like that. I'm like, oh yeah. Like, so each of those little things, the, the character sheet just gives you um, exactly what you need to like lean into and it's very easy to learn on the fly. Um, but I think probably my favorite thing that happened, um, gosh, oh, I, I think honestly it was, <laughs> uh, when I played Cher Bennett based off Claire Bennett from Heroes, uh, with, um, Ava's character, uh, Jane Wick. Uh, we were with Q, and Q was uh, trying to, f like, investigate this room, and I had no investigation or perception skills, so I just, sh Cher was a, a former cheerleader, and super, like, preppy and dumb and talkative, and so she just talked at him, and he started banging his head against the wall <laughs> and found a secret panel. <laughs> <laughs> I think oh, another thing in that game I was that reminded me because twice Cher just tried like pushing Jane Wick off of a tower and then the second one I don't remember what she tried but Jane Wick was just so much faster that she was like nope yep I tried a couple <laughs> times to and we both had you just had better agility dice but we both had that mm -hmm. that one ability that's um I can't remember what it's called but it was uh a quickness ability but you just I had like six dice or something which is pretty good and you had like 15 and i was like yeah <laughs> 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 so much faster 
Never mind. Um. <laughs> uh, so that's part of the genius that is from the core rules, the core system of Prowlers and Paragons. And that is that on the one hand, you can do what Rem did of just give me 15, 20 minutes, let me put this character together and then we'll figure it out as we go, whatever, whatever. But there's also enough potential crunch where you could spend, like if that's your jam, to spend the hours making, I must do the ultimate thing and make this stuff and you can play that number of game as well. It facilitates that. Yeah, so that's really either nice. way, you can really get some a satisfying character creation experience. Yeah. Yeah. So I, like I that. appreciate that a lot about I mean, don't tell him because he's got a big enough head as he is. Um, but yeah, lend him and tell uh, the primary original creator of Prowlers and Paragons. Yeah, he got it nailed down. That's awesome. That. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I spent hours building my first character. Primarily because she was a masks character originally, and so the masks power system is so different from mm -hmm. Prowlers of yeah. Paragons that I had to figure out, okay, what what is quintessential to this character, and then how do I do that? And I, <laughs> I think I had eight or nine different versions of her by the time I finished. <laughs> but that's just it. I love something that you just hit upon, Ava, which is that this system really helps facilitate you getting into who is this character and it really facilitates collaborative storytelling mm -hmm. with the system to the, the the math if you will to support that storytelling yeah so it's not just sitting around a campfire there's still you know you get the giant handful of the clicky clacky math rocks but which is so satisfying. Yes. All those mixes. <laughs> Especially like if you're like, I have a defining moment and everyone else is throwing resolve. And then all of a sudden you're like, I have this many dice. And <laughs> there's, there's something very visceral about that. But yeah, it just lends itself in so many ways to different aspects of a really rewarding experience. Heck yeah. Good game. Yes. Uh, I mean, and I'd like to point out that we did what, a Bill? character building session uh -huh. here. We did a character building session um, online here with you guys, and uh, uh, it only took about 30 minutes yep. to build a complete 100, 100 point character. Um, nice. We I love them. Yeah, we did uh, We did it twice. One video, because I was on it yesterday, it was 32 minutes and one was 39 minutes. And that's like with like intros and like super deeply explaining like, the the this is what you do for this because you've never built a character before and stuff like that so that's really cool um neat so we've got uh more comments uh don't forget to we're still uh what math 219 dollars away from funding uh and if you just are tuning in don't forget that we uh just added in if you're at the ten dollar level or haven't pledged yet. If you pledge at at least the $25 level, um, we're gonna send you a book plate to put in the front of your book that is autographed by the author, Bill. Um, so really great stuff there. So $25, but we've got great uh, tiers at the higher levels as well. We've got the bundle. Uh, ooh, we should talk about that. So for those who aren't familiar with Prowlers and Paragons, I think I'm gonna switch over to our, our little video we just made real quick um to show yeah. what is this because the concept is a little complicated um so here we go here we go where's my screen there and i need to un there and then i need to push that and Nocturne by Night is the villain's supplement to the blood and justice setting of Prowlers and Paragons. That was a lot of words. Let's break it down. Prowlers and Paragons Ultimate Edition is the core rulebook for this superhero game system. Simple system, 
simple character creation designed to let you get in and play quickly. Blood and Justice Welcome to Nocturne is a setting book, similar to D&D's Explorer's Guide to Wildmount. Nocturne is a Gotham-esque city, dark, gritty, dystopian. All the major sites and players of the city are there to help you build your campaign. Nocturne by Night is a villain supplement, or what I like to call Oops All Villains. Think of it like the monster manual for the Nocturne setting, but all the baddies are also playable. Whether you set them against your players or play the baddies yourself, this book is what you need. The bundle reward tier gets you all three books so you can hit the ground running in your campaign. I muted again. I'm bad at this. <laughs> um, so that's the, the explanation for it. <laughs> uh, so again, $25 gets you a copy of the book physically and the book plate. You've got the bundle tier that gets you all three books so that you have everything you need for Prowlers and Paragons and everything with the Nocturne lore. And uh, from there, it gets better because you can game with Bill, you can uh, game or you can uh, build a character for the game uh, to be put in the Nocturne by Night book, which is awesome. Uh, you and a group of friends can play. So there's a ton of options uh, that you can get part of and help us fund. And then we'll all get so excited right here on stream for you. <laughs> now, now, Pigeon, you had something you wanted to share. Yes. So if you notice, uh, Jen had to leave because she and uh, some of our fellow rabble rousers and miscreants and malcontents are all piling into Bill Key's house uh, later. And uh, she's got to drive up from Southern Denver uh, because we're play testing a exhibit for TEDx Mile High. Mobius World's Publishing was sub selected as one of the official exhibitors for TEDx Mile High on November 12th. I'm also one of the speakers, uh, which is crazy because that means somebody nominated me and they must have been smoking dope or something like that. <laughs> but, uh, so the thing is, what's great, we're using the Prowlers and Paragons uh, dice mechanics uh, because of time limits and we're not using adversity or resolve. Um, but it's demonstrating how, yes, Prowlers and Paragons is about being a superhero or maybe an action hero. But because of how the dice probability works uh, in the, the PNP system, it can also be used to play highly trained experts like uh, uh, um, cybersecurity experts, firefighters, uh, police, electricians, where basically the exhibit is a uh, um, Denver has been attacked under a cyber attack in the dead of winter in January. So the power's out. It's like negative 10 degrees outside and all the people coming through the exhibit get to play characters. Like they can play a firefighter, they can play a volunteer, they can play, you know, we have all these different other type of roles that can play to try to get Denver uh, back up and running and make sure people don't like freeze, you know, get the pipes working. So it's very intense. And we have two hour, two hour blocks, one hour before the, the talks begin and one hour in a mission to have all these people rolling through and uh, it's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be very, very exciting. The, the play tests have been going very well, very well. And uh, it, to um, the, the uh, shameless capitalist in me is like, we'll be pointing out to people like we can do this for like organizations. We can use the PMP system to actually run organizations through role-playing games. That's you really know, cool. Test their, test their stuff. So. That's so cool. Uh, you know what else is cool? Number one, we're at 18 viewers. So thank you guys and welcome. Uh, we're on the last 70 hours of the Kickstarter, which just went up again. We're at $6,338. We are $162 away from funding. Uh, 
I mean, I'm pretty sure I can speak for uh, myself and Ava and Bill and Pigeon that we will happy dance. If we can hit that number, we uh, we will happy dance on the international yeah. interwebs. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. So that's really cool, though, Pigeon. Uh, very exciting stuff uh, to to be te- uh, to be speaking, to be presenting, and then um, also to be running a game with that kind of mindset is really cool. Yeah. Neat. Uh, gosh. Let's see what else. We've got more comments. Um, while, while I look at these comments here, um, why don't we share something else on our desk? Does everyone have dice on their desk? I feel like that's something we would all have, right? Yeah. What is your favorite <laughs> dice set that's on your desk? Oh, I don't have sets on my desk. Let me... Or, or die, I guess. Um, I have to... I have a lot of choices to make. I don't... So, I am a quintessential dice goblin. I have two display cases. Wow. Uh, they each have five, ten. They each have 20 sets. So there's 40 sets right here. And then I have more that are not in a display case. Do you play with those have... or are they just for display? Oh, I play with them. Okay. Um, I only have two display cases because the first one came with like a large crack in a corner. So they sent me a replacement. Like, But it still holds dice, so... <laughs> Uh, my favorite set. You know, I actually have a uh, all my 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 gaming tables actually upstairs, but down here, I actually have some story cubes instead of dice. Ooh! Um, help generate, roll out a bunch of cubes and kind of interpret them and create some sort of prompt from it. Nice. I think my favorite is actually. Um, kind of relevant to to your guys's location it's a metal rainbow set uh, let me see if i can show this oh, so it isn't bright well here's the best part it's um, the same set that i was gonna show uh, a similar one it's not identical that's nice. neat but i got this at genghis khan uh from our mutual friend reva uh all seer um when she was there for layer of abraxas um in Abraxas games, but uh, I just, we we met at that con and I sat behind her booth with her like the entire weekend because she's fantastic. And I would just play with this like demo set of dice that she had uh, because I love the weight of them. And also I love shiny colors. And at the end of the con, she's like, take them, they're yours. And I was like, so they're one of my favorite sets. Wow, nice. Yeah. Alternatively, I've got this one. It's like a blue, purple, Ooh. green. Sweet. It's nice. Because it was like an 11 piece, so it's got four D6s and two D20s. Neato. Wow. Bill, how about I you? I don't actually have any dice at my desk, but what I do have is I have this collection of shiny rocks. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's even like, that's so on brand for <laughs> dice goblins anyway. It's like, I don't have dice, but yeah. here's some shiny rocks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have I have a ton of dice. Um, back on the other side of the room, I could run and grab some favorites, but yeah, at my desk, I only have rocks. Okay, okay, <laughs> only rocks at your desk. <laughs> Amazing. Um, let's see here. Oh, we have uh, from Creator uh, talking about Grayfin and the Masters of Muck for Life. That was a lot of fun <laughs> to play with. Uh... Um, PNP has the potential for GMs to create a memorable memorable villain in under a minute, or uh, work on a character for days if you want to exactly model something. It's amazing, um, awesome. Uh, Findhall said, uh, "I think the longest I've spent on character creation for uh, PPUE is like thirty hours. The vast majority of which was creating art and a custom character sheet. Actually, building the character was maybe ninety minutes tops, and she was pretty complex." Um, and art and the backstory are the most time consuming parts from Robert. Um, ooh, uh, Findhall, uh, dropped in a link for Silk Shadow, which I assume is a, a character sheet. Um, ooh. neato. Uh, Robert said when an extra player showed up at one of my games, I was able to hand him a pick of an NPC, tell him you have. 12d might and 6d and anything else appropriate to that character and he was able to start play immediately good session too 
Uh, wow. Neato. Uh, Findhall said, I've made enemies in under three minutes during game sessions. Um, oh, we have a question. Uh, does the 125 physical book deal come with the PDFs as well? Yes. Yes, it does. It does. Um, so books believe, and PDFs. What? I believe all of the books, all of the physical rewards come with the PDF as well. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Which is awesome. Um, what else? Uh, oh, <laughs> Bill, you already answered that question, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> yep. Uh, amazing for gamers from a champion's background. Uh, I plan, Preator says, I plan on running demo games at my friendly local game store. What module would you, would recommend to use to, for, to run new people through? Um, if you're running a blood and justice game, I have, um, I want to say that there's five modules out right now already for it. Um, there's Merciless Hospital. Um, there's Boudreaux's Old Cabin. Uh, the Sultan's Treasure, which Jennifer mentioned earlier today. Um, and there's another one. What's the other one now? I don't think. Um, I'll have to look on my computer here. But um, And I'm also writing another one called uh, um, Galveston Supermax Prison. So um, there are a lot of modules out already for Blood and Justice. Uh, Prater says uh, they were thinking Pizza Party. Oh yes, uh, yeah. Princess's Pizza Party—that's a fun one too. Yeah. <laughs> that, one, that one, that one can be either really funny and silly or really dark, kind of depending on which way you go with it. I've I've got options for going in both directions. So, depending on how how grim and dark you want to go, you can go really grim and dark, or you can just play it super funny and light. Ava it looked really cool because uh, that die is green, so it looks like you were holding something invisible, and it was pretty. Oh neat. yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'll say uh, when uh, Tammy's, uh, I'm sorry, Bill's wife, Tammy, runs Princess Pita Pizza Party at Con. She packs tables. Ooh, so, really? Yeah. Neat. It's fun. Oh, I can't wait to go to a con with you guys. Uh. <laughs> uh, Mer some Robert said uh, Merciless Hospital is fun. Um, Actually, uh, I have a question. Yes. I have a question for Bill about the the modules for uh, uh, Nocturne. Okay, I mean, absolutely. In your in your assessment, how uh, how easy or difficult is it to uh, for a GM to kind of uh, repurpose it around the edges to put it into another like their own home uh, setting or something like that? Um, I don't think it's very hard at all because one of the things I like to do when I'm writing modules is give a bunch of different options. So, um, for like I said before, uh, Princess's Pizza Party, um, you have the option of going very silly. Uh, um, it's essentially it's it's like a Chuck E. Cheese type uh, uh, restaurant that got closed down years ago, and um, it's now being haunted by demons, and the demons are making the the the, the characters come to life. And so you can go really super dark and uh, have it, you know, um, really grim and gritty and full of murder and um, horror. Or you can, you know, oh my goodness, all these silly characters are now living and they're they're trying to get you. You know, you can you can go in any direction. So very easy to repurpose for different games depending on how dark or light your your uh, your setting wants to be. Um, some of them, like the Sultan's Treasure, is specifically in Narn. Um, the, it, it really goes around the history of Nocturne and specific locations in the city. So that one's a little harder to run for if, if you're not in Nocturne or a city like Nocturne. Um, but um, uh, the other ones are actually pretty easy to, to adapt to whatever kind of game you want to play. Neato. Neato. Uh, we have another question from Robert. Uh, which Nocturne by Night villain do you enjoy running most? <laughs> um, I have enjoyed running um, the uh, the Cleansing Flame, which I talked about a little bit earlier, just because they're 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 so e easy to hate. You yeah, know, you're like, God, I really hate these guys, and I want them to lose so bad. <laughs> um. <laughs> um, 
the, you know, there's a lot of really great villains that I really love. I love the Duke of Nocturne. He's the the city's oldest and most powerful vampire. Ooh. Um, and he sort of uh, he's got his fingers in every single political criminal organization that you can imagine. He he knows everybody and he sort of controls everybody from behind the scenes. Um, he's a lot of fun. Um, Crypt, of course, we've talked about him. He's the the singing dancing zombie lord. Yep. Um, he's a lot of fun to play just because he's he can be very silly. Um, gosh, what else have I run? What other villains have I run? Um, there's the Moss Mound. Um, if you remember, like uh, Swamp Thing or Man Thing from uh, Marvel and DC, mm -hmm. um, he's kind of a swamp monster. Mm. Okay. I haven't gotten to, I haven't run any Nocturne by Night villains, but I have read through them a lot because if you've seen the social media posts about the individual villains, I wrote all of those. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've looked at them a lot. I, for one, cannot wait to run something with Playdate. Oh, yes. <laughs> the little immortal child just. <laughs> it's so creepy and I love it. I cannot wait to run something with her. <laughs> Yeah, she is definitely among the creepiest and most horrifying of the villains in there. She's just, she's immortal and she's completely unhinged and she's about nine years old, eight or nine years old. It's got the creep factor. Like I play a ball jointed doll that was awakened by like, brought to life by like a child's wish to be saved in a masks mm -hmm. game. I built her first in Prowlers and Paragons actually to figure out how I wanted her to work. And I love it so much. It's got that, it's got that really creepy Got that creepy factor to it. Heck yeah. You know, grandma always had those old porcelain dolls that eyes followed you. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Don't like that. Not one of them actually came to life. You don't like Chucky. Yikes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, actually, it reminds, we do it. There is a hero in the in Nocturne called Ragdoll. And her art, she kind of looks like a porcelain doll, even though she's a revenant, if I remember correctly. Mm. Right. But I, I actually, am, an amusing thought, the same game where I was in the front seat with everybody, the guy, the person playing Ragdoll, is Ragdoll actually got Ragdolled, like thrown in the corner somewhere, and she, the, uh, he decided to have her, like, stay like that to look like she, uh, she was like a mannequin or something like that, and it was just, I don't know, kind of amusing and creepy at the same time to think of, of this, you know, the Ragdoll <laughs> in the corner. Yeah. Creepy, if creepy. There no, if there are no other questions, I wouldn't mind uh, taking a risk and talking about some of the other stuff we have coming after Well of the World. Heck yeah. Well, so yeah. While we talk about all this other stuff, though, you should be over on that Kickstarter page because we're $162 away. Yeah. <laughs> so ah. close. Yeah. So close. <laughs> yes. So after... Um, I mean, things are, are, are subject to change, but we feel confident that, that this is going to go in the right order. So after Well the World should be, uh, um, oh, shoot, Darren Watts' uh, system, if I remember correctly. Silver Age. Silver Age. Um, actually, Bill might be able to talk about Silver Age better, and I could cover the, um, like, Kaze 5 and whatnot. Do it. Or, or uh, yes, sure, I can talk a little bit about Silver Age. Um, Darren is a, uh, sort of an amateur comics historian. Um, he, he loves the history of comic books and he, he has a real deep depth of knowledge about old comics. And so he is creating a silver age world that sort of reflects the, like the mid 1950s, all the way up through the early 1970s of comic books. Um, so, uh, the, the early Justice League, um, the early Avengers, uh, uh, the Fantastic Four, um, all of those, those uh, sort of iconic superheroes of that age of the 60s, uh, the late 50s, the uh, 60s, and the early 70s. Um, and he is currently playtesting right now with, a, with his own group, um, just kind of building the world. And um, I've seen a little bit about it, and it's, it's, Gosh, just there's so much fun stuff in there. You know, there's there's like atomic powered apes, and there's um, giant alien monsters. You know, like giant alien starfish type monsters, and just 
all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, you know, the, the center of the world full of mole people and, and lava people, stuff like that. Um, I think it's going to be a really fun world to play in. Yes, I'm looking forward to it. Neato. And af after that should be Mike Surbrook's Kaze 5, which is basically take PMP and make it anime and cyberpunk. So very, uh, um, very manga and anime influenced, you know, lots of giant robots, uh, uh, giant uh, monsters and whatnot. I can't remember the terms, throw them off the top of my head. And having read earlier previous versions of Kaze 5 written for different systems like Hero or whatnot, it's very, um, it's very over the top. Uh, so I'm very much looking forward to it. After that, tooting my own horn, I'm working on two settings. One, uh, maximum RPMs, which is a Mad Max-like setting, Ooh. where not only do you play a hero, you have a character sheet for your hero, but you have a sheet for your vehicle. So you can play your vehicles and other character. Your ride is what it's called. So it's um, very... Uh, we just funded! We just funded! Yeah, we did? Yes! Happy days! Fuck! Fuck. Yeah. Uh, Pardon my language! <laughs> it's okay! It's okay, we yeah. can... We're, we're, we can... We can... Fuck on this channel. 102% funded. Thank you all Good so run. much. Ah, yeah, uh, squeed. Oh, that's Did so exciting. Get three, somebody get like a three hundred dollars. Somebody got or? yeah. Somebody got to create a villain. Woo! Ooh, I mean, villain. that is a really cool reward. And considering other ones that are out there for create a villain, like it's not or create a character for the the book, it is not bad priced. Um. Mm. So really cool stuff. Uh, thank you guys so much. We made it. Um, ah! Weed. Weed. Is, is someone oh, texting Jen? <laughs> oh, yeah. Somebody text Jen. Let her know. She left Please me too early. I got it. I'll take care of it. Awesome. And then uh, I'll get back to. Yeah, yeah. I want, I want the rest of this story that you were telling. Um, okay. But we had to stop and party. And of course it happened at yeah, 69 sorry, hours to go. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it go up and I'm like... <laughs> I'll get Mike Sturberg and uh, Corey too. Yeah. Thank you thing. guys. Oh, you're the best. Oh, we made it. Sweet. Sweet. Awesome. With right. 69 hours so, left uh, to go. <laughs> of course it was. <laughs> yeah. uh, Ava, you will have to do it um, let me know who who tech uh who who got that uh that create a character so i can contact them as soon as the kickstarter is over you got it oh, yeah we'll start start sure. that's so cool <laughs> awesome thank you guys yeah oh gosh like my face hurts now <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thank you so much, certified T O. Oh, T organic, T Torg, Torganic, certified Torganic. <laughs> uh, nice. You're the best. Thank you so uh, much. Oh, you guys are all awesome. Yeah. Now, now, um, what? Uh, you, uh, something Mad Max. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> One setting I'm working on, yeah, maximum RPMs is a uh, Mad Max like, where it's like kind of a dystopian vehicle set in the United States. I uh, using real world locations. I'm actually going to be contacting locations that exist and say, "Hey, I'm going to feature you in this setting. What do you think?" And again, you play your character, and you also have a vehicle, and you have a separate hero um, sheet for your vehicle. And uh, we, I've, I've play tested it probably four times now, and it's a, it's a ton of fun. Like people just like circling in the wagons in the middle of nowhere to take on mutants. You know, busting into towns. You know, busting through blockades with their via, the rides and whatnot. So it's a lot of fun. No, is this, it, is this for PMP or is this another? Yes, it's for P. It's a setting for PMP. Oh, cool! So you'd get two character sheets as part of PMP. Neat. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So I'm expanding on the vehicle. Um, if you go in PMP, there's a section on vehicles. It's basically expanding on that. Cool. Um, but I mean, it's very easy to run. Uh, the second setting I'm working on, um, tentatively titled Her Majesty's Rakes and Scandals, is a steampunk setting. Ooh. What I'm doing. Yes. Is so think mm -hmm. a League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, but 
I am actually putting on my political science hat. Remember at the beginning of the talk, I said I'm a political scientist who studies game worlds, like the politics of games. I'm actually thinking there's going to be a whole bunch of people out there who say the last thing the world needs is another steampunk setting based on British Victorian colonialism. So what I'm doing is I'm using two methods, political methods, uh, process tracing and counterfactual analysis to work backwards from the setting to change history to make the Victorian era, era different. Like um, mm. everything's based on trade, not um, ownership of territory. Mm -hmm. So it gets now it makes like China an equal, it makes uh, India an equal, it makes uh, different states in Africa an equal. And now the conflict then can be based on trade wars and whatnot. So it kind of, uh, on the one hand, gets, a, gets away from some of the uncomfortable realities of the Victorian era while at the mm -hmm. same time preserving, like you don't have a game if you don't have conflict somewhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Plus infusing magic into the world too, which I'm, I'm that's the part I'm, because you can't really do that with political science. Magic, come on. <laughs> um, so, but I, I'll get pulled off. Now, in addition to that, we have some back of the napkin stuff too. Uh, converting our other tentpole product, Freedom Squadron, is a setting for, for um, Savage Worlds. I work working on a conversion so you, uh, for Freedom Squadron in PMP. So now we'll have, we'll have two different versions of it. Um, been mm -hmm. thinking about like an Indiana Jones like setting. Ooh, yeah. Something Ooh. Like the mummy, the like 20s to the 1940s action hero. Um, uh, Jen and I, this was a the crazy talk uh, the other day. We were talking about maybe convert converting or proposing to Pezo to do a Starfinder conversion for Colors Ooh. Of Ooh. Yeah, kind of uh, Ooh, that'd be cool. Yeah. You could do a nice Stargate setting with Stargate system with this as a Ooh. I like Stargate. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot coming down the pipe. I mean, we're really, really excited. It's a great time to be a professional gaming nerd. <laughs> yeah. 2022. That's what year it is, right? I, yes. yeah, <laughs> I, I lost track of, with COVID. That was like the worst time to be a gaming nerd. And now, now it's turning around. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how exciting. Cool. And, and so it takes me a while to, to understand a little bit. So Kaze 5, is that a different game than Prowlers or is that one of the settings? What's a setting? It's Basically a setting. Basically everything okay. we have coming out really is settings. Oh, great. The, Sweet. Like Prowlers and Paragons needs its Eberron, its Forgotten Realms, its um, Dragonlance. We're basically filling it up so GMs can say, I want to play a certain era of comics. Okay. I want to have a certain theme. And we're, we're, we want to provide that to GMs. Cool. Cool. Oh, you don't need one of everything. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so keep coming and, back um, to us, and you can pay me in books. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and there's one other uh, pigeon that uh, it, it's. I started to work on it, and it kind of got shelved. But uh, I'm working on uh, Champions of the Empire, which Ooh. is a fantasy setting, except it's a extremely high powered fantasy. So it's more like superheroes in a fantasy world. Ooh. Uh, and it's uh, I've run it a few times at cons just to play test it, and it's so far it's been a lot of fun. And I will get back to writing it soon, but I've had uh, all blood and justice stuff on my mind re recently. So I wonder why. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> and actually, Bill, you reminded me we did have a, we have another setting submitted by another author. I'm um, hopefully I get this correct. It's a um, teenage superheroes. Like teens just learning how to use their powers. Think, um, um, masks. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think, what was that movie where everyone played all the. Uh, hey, Penny. Anyway, uh, everyone stare at me uncomfortably while I try to think of it. Anyway, <laughs> it said, uh, yeah, uh, basically learn how to play characters, <laughs> just learning how to use their powers. And if I remember correctly, um, we had talked about embedding this setting inside the world of nocturne so it's basically taking place it's in the uh, world that was certainly one option it's but we yeah. we hadn't settled yeah, on that it was before. called um uh, the radical project yeah yeah oh, thank okay you. was was the movie you were thinking of sky high yes okay thanks yeah. brie that was a fun movie yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, she's she's excellent. She she kicked all of our asses at trivia a couple weeks ago, so this yeah. checks out, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I, I want to throw out a note. In addition to our Kickstarters, um, the uh, we have since we have all this exciting stuff coming. Uh, consider joining our Patreon. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I know uh, Sarah Rem may have put out the link a little earlier. I'll do it again. But uh, that's, uh, you know, using that to kind of, you know, build our operating capital, but at the same time, uh, or I'll do it. exclusive um, content or content that may only go to Patreons or content that goes to Patreons first. So maybe a year later is released to everybody else. And so there's even um, ability to, to, play or play test or whatever like yes. uh, yeah. from being a patreon because we did that with the restless Bar barbarian gaming where we got some patreons to join us for stream yeah and so that's, i believe also where we got the uh create your own character in pnp in blood and justice yeah yeah so um cool stuff on the patreon uh ava thanks for dropping that link mm -hmm. um now, I kind of want to ask you, so, so much is coming. Uh, by the way, we should also drop your Facebook so that people get more news when this stuff is dropping. Um, but uh, I want to kind of talk about the Kickstarter. Like, what has been, what's the experience like uh, from your end as creators? Like, yeah, I'm, I'm asking this knowing a lot of these answers because we helped manage it. But like, what are... <laughs> what is exciting about running a Kickstarter? What is challenging about running a Kickstarter? And uh, yeah, I just like to get a peek behind the curtain for everyone. Wow. Um, one thing that I recommend um, is to have as much of your project finished as possible before the Kickstarter starts. Um, I have, been I've I've backed Kickstarters where it didn't the the book or whatever it was that I was backing didn't come out until three or four or five years later, um, and that can be really frustrating. <laughs> so try to have as much of it done as you can before you kick it, um, and that's not always possible because you know these things cost money and the the reason for the Kickstarter is to raise the money for these things, but. Yeah, if if your if your people are waiting for years and years before the project comes out, then that's a that's in my opinion that's a bad thing. Um, Blood and Justice is almost finished. We're just right now we're just waiting for a few pieces of art to to trickle in, um, and of course now that somebody's uh, got the create your own character, um, we'll have to do that as well. But, Yay! Uh, but yes, thank you. Uh, and uh, so yeah, um, Nocturne by Night will not out it won't take very long for it to come out uh, i think also i i thought you were going to go a different direction with that with the um be as close to done as possible because like it's hard to kickstart a concept um and so when you're like yeah this is a villain supplement all right well what does that mean who are the villains how many are there like there's follow-up questions that people have and so like Ava has done a really good job of of releasing like the little villain snippets and stuff like that so people can really understand what it is they're getting um and you don't have to like use a lot of words to say like this is what we plan to do you can say this is what's already in process or been done yeah cool so what about you Pigeon any thoughts from you uh just glad that I'm working with folks like Rem Alternus who know how to do these sort of things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah, it depends on the day. Like there's definitely challenges. So um, being entirely like transparent and honest, like a big challenge for, for us for this one was, was the rebranding for Mobius where you guys had a heck of a following and then all of a sudden, everyone's like, what is a Mobius? Um, and so kind of changing that name, you know, you guys had a huge drive through RPG list. You've got your previous Kickstarter backers, but we don't have the social access we you used to have and stuff like that. So uh, kind of getting the word out um, was was harder than we anticipated. And so, um, you know, it it's 
69 hours to the end of the campaign when we funded and and thank goodness for that um but yeah definitely a little harder to to reach everyone than uh we originally anticipated i'd say yeah and that ties into um another another aspect of this one is that it's I mean, you created that video yesterday, Rem, and, and we're three layers deep into Prowlers and Paragons, so it's hard to get new people invested in this book because, well, they don't know what Prowlers and Paragons is, so they don't know what Blood and Justice is, so why would they care about the villain supplement for Blood and Justice? And so getting the new people excited has been, that that's also been another hurdle because we're so far deep. Yeah, it, it took me quite a while because, again, like I said earlier, like, New systems are hard for me. I love gaming. And as soon as I get into something, I'm into it. Uh, but it's hard to get me into something because uh, rules are scary. Um, <laughs> so, you know, for me, it took a while to understand that the whole, like the video says that uh, Nocturne by Night is the villain supplement to the blood and justice setting of Prowlers of Paragons. Um, so like, I, I felt like, even the project followers that we have and people that we're reaching, if they're asking the question like, okay, I like the art or I like the words that they're using, but what is this? I don't really get it. So I'll follow this project, but like, I'm not sure if I'm going to back. I feel like that was like a clarifier that, that um, was helpful to happen. Right. Mm -hmm. If I may, uh, Sarah, yeah. you just remind me of some other big things that might Please. excite our viewers. Please. Um, a couple other things we're working on. So our ten, again, our tent pole products are Pals and Paragons and Freedom Squadron. So you think Mobius, think superheroes, action heroes, and whatnot. But what you're also going to see uh, coming down the pipeline is if you remember the old EBG stuff where you had Mike Sturbrook presents and Bill Keys presents and whatnot, we are going to have imprints uh, within, or we should be having imprints inside of Mobius where like Bill will be able to write uh, maybe some fifth edition products. I'd like to write some traveler products. So you basically say, I've come to Mobius for my superhero and action hero fix, but I like the work from our, the, the stable of writers. Like I like Bill Keys, I like Mike Sherbrook, I like uh, Team Bircher and whatnot. And that way you can see, oh, what, what products do they have for other systems? Um, also on the back, speaking of other systems, I don't know if, I'm gonna throw both Bill and I under the bus for this one. <laughs> and this is very much pencil on a napkin still. Uh, we're thinking of a um, do, actually doing a Mobius branded fifth edition uh, product for um, um, Spelljammer, a Ooh. setting for Spelljammer. But again, that's uh, this is something we kind of uh, outlined out at a Beacon recently, and that's gonna that's gonna take a little while to uh, work through. Finally. Something else we're working on is, you know how if you go to drive through RPG, some publishers have content creator programs where people can actually say, I'm going to create something for PMP and then you know, drive through RPG takes their cut, Mobius takes their cut, but then I take get a royalty. So we're working on a program where people can write um, their own content in drive through RPG for Prowls and Paragon. That's awesome. I'll be able to. Yep. Get that's, their coffee money. <laughs> that's really cool. Yeah. More more P and P. Yes. I'm gonna get a cup of coffee right quick, so I'll be right back. Sure. Uh, <laughs> our 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 best friend, certified Torganic, um said uh uh that even with uh P and P Ultimate Edition, I had to play the game first before I decided to drop the hammer and back the game. Um so has there been any conversation, uh, Bill, of like, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm comparing this to like Shadowrun Missions Online, where it's it's like a community where people can get together and like play one shots or or play parts of missions or like go through these PDF or these uh, the PDFs for the 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 games that you um, you have. Uh, is there anything like behind the scenes kind of being planned for like? non-con scenarios to get in and play um and and learn the system and fall in love yeah that is something that we've talked about doing a lot um and 
you know, with all the new tools, online tools, uh, Zoom and Discord and, um, you know, Roll20 and all these different places that you can go to, to game, um, we are definitely thinking about doing this. We actually had, uh, in, in the planning stage, um, we had a, a, a big idea of uh, running uh, either one shots or short campaigns for people. Um, and that kind of, uh, um, when we switched over from Evil Beagle to Mobius, that kind of got dropped a little bit. But I think at some point in the near future, we'll probably be picking it up again. Cool. Um, um, I also know that um, Mike Serbrook runs his uh, Well of the Worlds game online, and he always loves it when people just drop in to watch. So. Um, yeah, that's also an option as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think probably where's, where's the, is the discord server the best place to like talk? Oh yeah. I see like looking for players, looking for GM, um, there's different things in there. So, um, maybe we can drop the, I, I don't think I have the ability to invite people. Oh wait, Hey, invite people. Let's see what, um, <laughs> copy um, and robert dorf says uh we we do run games uh set in uh prowlers and paragons and blood and justice at uh at various denver conventions denver and um nearby colorado um and then we also have a few games in the um prowlers and paragons mobius worlds discord so yeah that's cool um Man, every time I hear someone, one of you guys talk about Genghis, I want to go back again and play with you guys. Um, it's really my favorite con. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, uh, as as Pigeon says, we run Kickstarters for people, so please reach out to us at producer at remalternus com if you want us to run a Kickstarter for you so that we can make lots of money in Ava and I can go all the cons and play with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, awesome. Um, cool. So lots of um, con ability to play, uh, playing on Discord and, and you know, Roll20 and talking through some of that. Um, what else? Uh, let's let's do another. What's on your desk thing? What else is what is <laughs> what is a nerdy thing that you have on your desk? Um, we we went through plushies. We went through favorite dice. Um, I think. Yeah, I think I think I have this is this is something new I've seen advertised. Um, I I saw them at Origins this year. Um, they do these really heavy, nice carved uh, coins. And Ooh. yeah, so I got a Ooh. dragon because the Rem dragon, I'm addicted to dragons. And then the back has an original, like they each have their own backs. Um, so like there's the hoard of treasure kind of thing and a cave, uh, which is really nice. And then being obsessed with mythical creatures, I also got a phoenix. Um, and they yeah there we go mm. yeah and uh on the back is lots of fire um but they're like bulky and heavy and really nice they're also paintable so you could paint them if you want to um oh wow yeah so they've been at a lot of cons recently and they've been promoting themselves on different con uh facebook pages and stuff recently uh and they even have like character like rogue and they have um like different norse gods and egyptian gods and stuff like that so their collection seems to be growing um but yeah i think that they're super fun and so i keep them on my desk what about you guys um i've got a couple things here uh, first i have this is a bar of soap which i have next to my desk because i need to order more of them um, but I picked this up at um, um, Chupacabra Con in Texas uh, last spring, and I've, I've already I I picked up four or five of them, and I've already used them all. So I need to order some more. So um, if you want some really nice smelling soaps, um, go to uh, Clever Girl Soap Company. Clever Girl, um, I, I really like that. Like is is their logo yes. a Velociraptor? Because I will tolerate nothing else. I, right, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> A little magic wand. I, guess. <laughs> I mean, a magic wand would help you summon a velociraptor. So, 
Um, yes, I, I suppose so. Yes, <laughs> and she has has soaps that have a more um, I don't want to sound like sexist or whatever, but they have. She has soaps that have a more masculine scent, and soaps that have a more feminine scent. Cool. So they're both for men and women, uh, um, for for anybody. Um, so yes, this is the one that I got is the Prince Charming, and um, so I I really like it, and I need to order some more. So that's why I have it down at my desk. Neat. And the other thing I have are these little guys. I have a Daredevil and a Hulk, which I got in a vending machine. Um, they they like open up and so the body goes inside the head and they came like this as a little ball <laughs> <laughs> how fun and you open it up and you put the head on and uh and the Hulk. yeah so cool uh yep. speaking of of uh soap too not only should you check out clever girl but uh, Ava, didn't we just launch the backer kit for uh, the gelatinous cube soaps? Yes, and we have a pre-order store. Can so you? You missed. The... Yes. Can you? Can you drop the link? Oh uh, yeah, let me grab that. Um, so yeah, we did a Kickstarter for gelatinous cube soaps. They come with a dice set inside, and there's seven different scents and colors. So like whatever your ooze preference is um i'm getting one of all of them um <laughs> uh they all have neat scents and um and and the colors are really cool and they hold up really well like um you can pull all the dice out if you want and it still like holds its shape uh and seems to last even after like 30 uses because um cassie's been testing it um so check it out uh and that's live until the end of november i believe right uh, the pre-order store will close on November 6th. So oh, we okay. got about a week. Okay, okay. Um, so that we can get all the counts in, and I think she wants to start shipping them out in, I want to say she wants to do December. <laughs> we'll see. I, I love your, your post, Bill. Please, please read that. <laughs> That's Robert excellent. Dorf. Robert Dorf just above said, now you know how Bill smells. So, yep. And you can never know that. So now you know. <laughs> it, it frankincense and incense. It smells like Prince Charming. <laughs> cool. All right. So, um, Pigeon, how about you? What's on your desk? Oh, man. All right. The, um, ooh, here we go. I'm going to nerd out. So the, uh, if you watch the brand new um, um, Nocturne by uh, Night um, video where there's a by that Rem did with the, the the song in the background. Yeah. Well, I made that song. So what's on my yeah. desk is I've got actual like oh. gear and stuff. Ooh, just, look at uh, you! This, this is my new centerpiece. I'm just learning how to use it. Uh, a a, a Kai, IPC forty where I could I could do all sorts of stuff in this. Like I could DJ a set without um, letters. Run it just with this thing. I love this thing. My uh, launch control is I can MIDI map all the dials and control like instruments on like a base. Let me back up. I run entirely in the box. I don't have any external instruments. Okay. So, but I like the feel of using an instrument like the moving wires and, and uh, turning pots and pressing buttons. So I like to be able to mix and match. Like I can work in the box but I get the tactile map everything. So it's very, very, um, like the word sensual. <laughs> if I'm just sitting here and making music, clicking a mouse, that's not that, that much fun. So. Neat. Yeah. Speaking of, um, for those that have joined us in the last like 30 minutes or so, uh, let's get a taste of that music, uh, that pigeon produced and, uh, get a good explanation on what this Kickstarter is so that you all can go and back it because you know you want to. You want to see us get all excited on stream. Uh, that's part of the fun and why we do this. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, here we go. We're going to watch that video real quick and we'll be right back. Nocturne by Night is the villain's supplement to the blood and justice setting of Prowlers and Paragons. That was a lot of words. Let's break it down. 
Prowlers and Paragons Ultimate Edition is the core rulebook for this superhero game system. Simple system, simple character creation, designed to let you get in and play quickly. Blood and Justice Welcome to Nocturne is a setting book, similar to D&D's Explorer's Guide to Wildmount. Nocturne is a Gotham-esque city, dark, gritty, dystopian. All the major sites and players of the city are there to help you build your campaign. Nocturne by Night is a villain's supplement, or what I like to call oops all villains. Think of it like the monster manual for the Nocturne setting, but all the baddies are also playable. Whether you set them against your players or play the baddies yourself, this book is what you need. The bundle reward tier gets you all three books so you can hit the ground running in your campaign. Ta-da! That's, that's the video we were talking about. Awesome. So music produced by our friend Pigeon, which is awesome. And um, nice and Prowlers and Paragonsy, superhero-y. And uh, yeah, so that's that's what this Kickstarter is all about. So head on over to mobiusworldspublishing.com slash kick uh, and get in on it because we still have 69 hours left. It's almost 68. And uh, yeah, we get all excited by your support. So yeah, and there are stretch goals. Ooh, yeah. I forgot um, about in those. In case we managed to make them. Let's, let's talk about <laughs> stretch goals um, right after Ava shows us, because I ignored Ava about her exciting desk thing. I don't really have exciting desk things. I mean, I've got my Switch over there charging. I've got a dozen or two notebooks. Uh, probably hundreds of pens, pencils, and highlighters, because I have a problem. <laughs> I'm not even joking. Like, this doesn't scratch the surface. <laughs> Fair. Fair. Wow. <laughs> I have a problem. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't really have anything. I mean, I've got, let's see. I've recently gotten into dip pens. The so glass pens, ink. Ooh. They're nice. I love. Her. I have like. I used to do yeah. calligraphy, but I I had I have to change how I write because I'm left-handed, so the ink will smear. So I have to oh, kind yeah. of like, like instead of putting my my side on on the page, I have to like turn my wrist to. To do the things, but. Mm -hmm. Oh, Nito! All right, so stretch goals. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you take this, Ava, because I'm gonna I'm gonna run to the restroom. All right, so let's see. What milestones did we put those at? I can't even remember now. Uh, $2,000, it looks like. Oh, yeah. All right. So for every $2,000 beyond the initial goal of 6500 so the first one will be at 8500 if we reach it, um, we will get a new plot point adventure written by Bill Keys. What did you decide you're doing for that, Bill? Um, it is going to be a, um, a a sort of a tour through the magical underworld of the city. Um, uh, be using a, a lot of the villains from uh, Nocturne by Night, a lot of the supernatural villains, uh, such as Crypt, um, the Duke, and others. Um, and it's going to be, um, yeah, it, just a sort of a... Uh, a a uh, saving the city from the supernatural sort of idea. Yeah, and alongside with that, so those will be in PDF form unless we somehow reach uh, 16,500. At that point, all five of the adventures will be made into a physical book. Um, but mm -hmm. alongside those adventures, with each stretch goal we reach, we will add two or ten of the new villains of the book will be made into collectible cards that you'll be able to add on to any order. So I, do we have the mock-up on the? We do not. Uh, I mocked them up. So it's basically the front of the card will have the image of the villain and uh, a quote from them 
And then on the back, you'll have the villain's stats and powers. So that you'll be able to just show your players the card, and you have the stats right there in front of you. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, I don't know if we're going to make it, but I'm very excited to write these adventures. Um, I really like the idea of exploring the, the supernatural underside of the city. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, all right, well, while I'm still stalling for Sarah to get back because I'm terrible at hosting these sorts of things, um, <laughs> <laughs> we have another stream um, Monday afternoon um, of Crawlers and Paragons. Uh, this time, Bill will be a player. He will not be running it. Um, <laughs> it'll be GM'd by, uh, if you're around Rem at all, you'll probably recognize Teslin or Tom. Um, he will be GMing it. Uh, Bill and I think Jennifer also will be playing um, alongside myself. And uh, Isabets or Elizabeth, who just made a character with Bill Wednesday, Tuesday, earlier this week. <laughs> And we will be, let me pull that up. He finally told me what kind of we're going to be running. Um, so this is what uh, Teslin sent me about what we're going to be playing. So everyone was sure it was the end of the world. The meteor shower that NASA, did... okay. The meteor shower detected by NASA and other space agencies across the world was sure to be a planet killer. Amazingly enough, governments of the world kept it quiet. There was nothing that could be done, so they decided to let people live out their lives in peace. Then, amazingly enough, the world didn't end. The meteors slowed down and didn't hit with the same ferocious impact as was predicted. They actually slowed down after they hit the atmosphere. Officials around the world rejoiced until it was revealed what was the real danger of those meteors. The meteors contained alien creatures bent on destruction, and they started making their way across the Earth, leaving wanton destruction in their wake. People across the world called out for salvation, and it came to them from a New Zealand genetics lab, when a hidden project was activated, and suddenly the Norse gods walk the Earth once again. We'll be playing those Norse gods. Ooh! That's what we're going to be so doing exciting. Monday, <laughs> and that'll be at uh, 1 p.m. Mountain Time. That's neato. Cool. So uh, yeah, I can't wait. So you were talking about the end of the campaign and what we have on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Neato. Um, yeah, and and yeah, there's there's just been so much content um, throughout this Kickstarter, and thank you guys at Mobius for making all the time. We've done. Gosh, we've done the the recorded or the the stream for the crypt episode we had you guys on gen con tv uh for a game uh with michael we did an interview with bill on gen con tv we did an interview with bill and jen on gen con tv um we did the did i say the crypt episode already mm -hmm. um so then we did the restless barbarian one and then we did the two character creation sessions. Did I say that already? I, I'm losing track. Uh, we've done a lot. Uh, <laughs> so there's a ton of content. Um, and I think all of it is, yeah, all of it is available on our YouTube channel. So uh, except the Restless Barbarian one that's available on their YouTube channel. Um, <laughs> so yeah, you can check out tons of content to see if this is the game for you. And the games are pretty short. I think we only did like two hour games. So yeah. Um, they're pretty fast and easy to pick up and understand and see the character sheets even and and see how easy it is to play. Cool. What else is going on in Mobius land? So we talked about all of your projects. Um, anything else happening that that you want to tell everyone about? Oh, uh, yes. Um, it looks like we have our first uh, physical distribution. Uh, I, I live in Fort Collins, Colorado, and uh, we have a big gaming store here, Griffin Games and Ooh. Comics, the big comic book store. I went to their town hall meeting. Um, I'm part. It's a co-op too, and I'm part of the co-op. And um, they asked uh, one of the questions to the town hall is like, "What products would you like to see?" And I raised my hand. And they know. They all know me that I'm even called Pigeon in their system. <laughs> 
Um, I said, what is it? I said, I work for Mobius. I mean, how do I, if we wanted to put, you know, put our um, products in your store, how do we do it? And they're like, oh, that's easy. Just, you know, give us the whole set of code from Darth RPG and we'll stock your stuff. That'll be the first, that means Griffin Games will be the first uh, physical, friendly local game store where you can buy our products. Heck and then yeah. we'll be expanding awesome. up from there. That's yeah, first, super cool. Hopefully not the last. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you know any game store owners that would be interested, we've got um, a local game store here in, um, we're right outside Montreal. And it's it's bilingual, so they speak French and uh, English and have games in both. But uh, I, I told them of my severe disappointment in their RPG section because they have like a couple of D&D books and I'm like, mm 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 mm, -mm. Uh, so, um, so Thomas and I might uh, start spending like some Fridays there and and running some games for the community to get it more uh, in this area because I think like with the work we do on Kickstarters, it'd be great to have like play testers and people we could record in person and and things like that. So, um, I think it would be really great to 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 have those kinds of connections with game stores that you guys know and are passionate about. Yeah, yeah. Heck, I'll even drive out to it and run games. Are you gonna come um, to Montreal? Actually, I will be in Montreal in March. What? Yeah. <laughs> when in March? Um. Uh, shoot. Give me one second. Um, it's for the International Studies Association uh, conference. Because I'm actually gonna be on a wargaming uh workshop and wargaming panel. Neato. <laughs> No. The ISA net. I just can't remember exactly. It's during my spring break, so I can't roost in the in the spring. <laughs> okay. Montreal for for a week. International Studies Association conferences ISA twenty twenty three. It is March fifteenth through eighteenth. Okay, I think maybe that might work because uh, I I think uh, Gary Khan is like it the twenty fourth or something like that, and I am coming to going to Wisconsin for Gary Khan, but. If it's the week before, I should be around, and we should get together. Yeah, I mean, I figure if I'm going to be going to Canada, I might, I might get there early. I might get there like on Saturday. Cool. Yeah, we'll show, we'll show I'm you around. around. Yeah, yeah. Uh, take you to the good places to eat, and uh, there's so many parks here. It's actually really beautiful. The architecture is beautiful here too. Um, Nito. Oh, that's so exciting. Friendship. I've been up to uh, Montreal a few times for work. Um, unfortunately, I doubt that they will send us up there again because uh, I'm on a different team now. Oh, but, um, it's such a it's such a nice city. Um, I really love going through the underground mall. Yeah, like, uh, that was my big was... thing right when I visited Thomas because he had to work during the week. Um, so I would go take the subway to the underground mall and walk around uh, and explore. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, I, the the thing that amazed me, I was walking through it, I was like, okay, I've seen everything. And then I would be like, oh, wait, this corridor goes somewhere else. And then I would find like a whole nother branch of the mall. I still don't and know it how it's laid out. Going. Yeah, it just kept going. And I was like, <laughs> I am so lost. I don't know where I am right now. If I if I go above ground, then I will never be able to find myself again. Yeah, it's I, I, I think it's funny because it makes me think of like the frozen north and like dwarves burrowing into mountains and stuff like that so uh the dwarven people of montreal are <laughs> accomplished uh <laughs> mall builders underground <laughs> there are apparently i haven't done this but there are apparently like tunnels um to walk around when it gets too cold um hmm. yeah so i'm gonna have to figure that out tell me everything husband um <laughs> i want to explore the city more so but yeah, yeah come come visit and i know uh that the REM Alternus folks have asked me to like host a REM con um, at some point and like have people over to game and hang out for a week or something like that. But uh, we're going to need to wait until we don't have, we have something bigger than a one bedroom apartment to, to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so someday, someday. Now, another thing uh, that we're working on, and uh, Bill, you can punch me in the face if I characterize this wrong. Trying to get a, a um, get up on the v on virtual tabletops. We had been Astral was our basically our VTT of choice. We had ENP built into it, 
So it just worked and then Astral closed. So we've right. been wondering like, do we go to um, roll 20? Do we go to um, Fantasy Grounds? Do we do Foundry? And at least for speaking for myself, I haven't personally settled on a VTT that I'd like to uh, make, say this is my preferred location to run EMP. I don't know if Bill has had uh, luck with other uh, VTTs. Yeah, we run um, a bi-weekly game, uh, Parlors and Paragons, in Roll20, but there's no, I don't think there's any actual official uh, PNP support on Roll20 right now. Um, I know that our Game Master spent a ton of time um, building powers and stuff into the, the system. Um, and then, of course, they updated, like six weeks later, they updated their system and most of his macros that he built stopped working so uh, we've got um, some friends in roll 20 that we could introduce you to and see if you can get some support uh through them that would be wonderful. <laughs> love that yeah yeah i love it. that's that's one thing gosh yeah um well, we were talking a little bit earlier about oh go ahead oh i did i was just gonna say we were talking a little bit earlier about um running one shots or short campaigns or stuff for just for people to get a uh just a handle on pnp just to to see what the system can do and um you know having a dedicated um site that we could go to like like a roll 20 or anything really would be great yeah um uh, oh crap i had a thought and i don't remember what it was oh one thing i love about the gaming community is that like it's big but it's small mm -hmm. and so like there's someone that 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 can do anything. So like my my superpower is is talking to people. Like I can't do all the things that um that like Rem Alternus does or accomplishes or whatever. Like our the quality of our streams for like Gen Con TV and stuff that we have someone that specializes in that and people that like are either willing to learn or have that knowledge ahead of time. Um but like the community is so small that you meet someone and all of a sudden you're like talking to them and you don't realize that they're, you know, the director of fiction for um, drive through RPG or, uh, you know, like things like that. So as you learn and meet these people, you start to build these these connections and and it doesn't take long to like kind of get in everywhere, you know, like it, it's the community is small enough that someone knows someone who can which is really cool. I love that about the community. Yeah. Neato. So, so hopefully coming to VTT, lots of settings coming up for Prowlers and Paragons. What about your other, um, cause Mobius does games besides Prowlers. So like, what are those? Can we talk a little about those? So yeah, we have, um, our other tentpole product is a freedom squadron, which is a, Currently a Savage World setting, but again, we're also we're we're working on making a Prowls and Paragons conversion for it. Mm -hmm. And it's AC, what we call a love letter to GI Joe. So it is a action hero, like over the top, um, you know, bullets flying everywhere, and, you know, it, people wearing masks and all that. It's and it's great. So yeah, we have a uh, we have um been talking about. All this love we're getting to PMP, that hey, if we have this this setting that people are fans of, Freedom Squadron, let's build out some more products for that as well to expand expand its uh, expand its reach. Yeah, as well. it's a fun setting. It is a very fun setting. In fact, I have on my desk right here some of the action cards from uh, Freedom Squadron. More nerdy stuff on the desk. Yes. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Also, Pigeon, question for you that uh, I have had. Is that background your actual place? Yes. Because I always like the little fire thing that's behind you, and but I didn't know oh, if yeah, that was... Oh, yeah, this is all legit. Okay. This is my, my nerd nest. Your nerd nest. I, I like it. I sit down here with just... Unless I need to read something paper, I have to put on a, <laughs> a white light. I always <laughs> keep very... The LEDs running. It's very... I love it. I love working in here. I'll just put it that way. I love working in here. Neat. That's so cool. Um, yeah. <laughs> I've got the green screen up, not because we have a background clearly on this overlay that is barely an overlay, 
but because my apartment is messy and this hides it. <laughs> That's why I put the blur on. You don't have to deal with the mess in my room. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Actually, well, this is my, this is my gaming cave. If you guys can see some of this, I've got a gigantic whiteboard. Nice. Right there. Yeah. Um, which. Now that's all the stuff that's written on it is for the various games that I've got going on. Cool. Um, big table right here. Seats eight easily and 10 with a little bit of work. Um, over here that you can't see, we have a snack bar and a drink bar um, full of uh, alcoholic and non-alcoholic, mostly non-alcoholic drinks right now. Cool. Uh, and snacks, mostly unhealthy snacks, but we also like to chop up vegetables and stuff for people when they're here. Nice. Uh, or I have my miniatures collection, which is, I'm going to show you that because it's huge. Ooh. So, yeah. So these shelves here. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. It's very cozy down there. Um, I've played yeah. a lot of games there. Again, we've uh, prototyping our stuff for TEDx. Very nice. That's awesome. I'm about to next weekend. I'm, uh, I've got a four hour session scheduled for me and Ava to start learning battle tech. So that's going to be my first foray into minis. Nice. Neat. Oh, fun. speaking of minis, I've got. Yeah. The blur is off. The blur is off. Gangs of the Under City. Under City. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, I don't think we've gotten to talk about this, uh, Mobius, uh, but we are partnered with Fragging Unicorns Games. They're kind of our game development side of things. Um, and mm -hmm. they create, so, uh, it's owned by, uh, Opti, uh, who does for Shadowrun fans. Uh, he is the Neo-Anarchist podcast guy and he's written a ton for Shadowrun and stuff like that. But he, um, created a minis cyberpunk fantasy skirmish game. Um, and so the quality of the, the minis is really freaking good. They're metal minis. And they're diverse. Um, so, like, there's one in a wheelchair that I love. Uh, that's Abby. She's really cool. Um, and they're all different, like, gangs that go up and fight each other. Um, orcs, yetins, um, dwarves, elves, all kinds of stuff. One is, like, a metal rock band. Um, <laughs> but they've got all kinds of minis and uh, stuff on there. And you can still get all of this stuff on their website. And in the new year, they're going to be launching in the same world because it takes place in Neo Babylon. They're going to be launching a cyberpunk fantasy role playing game called Subversion um, that takes place in the same world. So, um, yeah, that's that's fragging unicorns. Sweet. Ooh. Yeah. Do you have any of the minis, Ava, to show <laughs> off? Uh, they're still in packaging. They're still. <laughs> uh, they're, they're still in pieces. Yeah, they're still in pieces. <laughs> I never, I never really get into miniatures because, uh, again, twenty five years in the military kind of discouraged having a bunch of stuff. They're moving all the time, and now I, I wouldn't have any unless I put shelving in here, which I'm more likely to do. I would have, I don't really have any place to put them. So yeah. I live vicariously through uh, playing at Bill's, and he has all the minis. Um, I, I, I have. So I'm a little judgy on minis because uh, my my ex worked at, at Games Workshop and told me I had to build and paint an army before I could play. Um, <laughs> and so I tried and eventually it was just like, this is a lot of work and I don't know what the reward is. So I don't care anymore. Uh, <laughs> so and then like, of course, he's my ex. So now I'm just bitter about it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I've never really been into minis or anything, but, um, since we work so closely with Catalyst Game Labs and we run Kickstarters for them now, um, we want to have as much knowledge about Battletech as we do about Shadowrun so that we can do good work for them. So, um, so I'm making the time. Uh, okay. They did get me a little bit interested because they told me, cause I'm more of a fantasy nerd than a sci-fi nerd. So, so like big men putting on like dude bros putting on big robot suits is not my genre and like doing it in space. That's like, meh. Um, but they told me it's like that 
with Game of Thrones, and that got my attention. So the political intrigue and stuff like that. So I'm going to start reading the novels and uh, kind of get into the lore a little bit, and uh, then hopefully I don't have to assemble and paint an entire minis team to start playing this game. Um, and and we'll see. Now I also am fully aware that I am very judgmental and often wrong. So like for instance, the first time um, I played D and D with a group with my ex, uh, and they invited someone in, and we finished our campaign. And he he was a writer for Shadowrun. He's like, hey, I want to uh, run a game of this cyberpunk fantasy game for you. And I'm like, that sounds stupid. And now, like, my entire brand is Shadowrun. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I'm a big hypocrite, and that's fine. So uh, I'm ready to be proven wrong yet again um, for those Battletech fans out there that are like, quit being judgy on my game. I'm sure in, like, a year I'll be like, who wants to talk about Battletech? <laughs> so that's my my judgy story of how i am judgy and often also wrong sweet i used to also say in college i said i would never watch star trek or play D. &D. <laughs> <laughs> so oh i'm a big fat liar you know it's it's good that you can admit that you were mistaken you know a lot of people would be like no i still don't want to play to be fair, I, I, I tried to watch Star Trek uh, from the beginning. I cannot, as an actor, watch Shatner. I, I can't do it. <laughs> I tried. I gave it, like, ten episodes or something, and I'm like, no. <laughs> now, I know, I know I would love Next Gen because Patrick Stewart, like, has my heart, and, and a lot of that <laughs> cast is phenomenal, um, but I just haven't done it yet. Because then... I'd have to change my story, and I like my judgy story. <laughs> uh, I also I dropped in the chat uh, fraggingunicorns.com. No, Go ahead. I'm not a huge Star Trek fan either, but you know the the nice thing about being a nerd is that there's so many different options. You can you know you don't have to like everything because there's just too many things to like. So that's know, true. I like what I like. There's some stuff that I'm not into, and that's cool that you are. Yeah. That other people are. Yeah, definitely. It's um you know, f your fandom is your fandom and there's no reason to be gatekeepy when we're all just dorking out about <laughs> things we love. <laughs> um which is great. Oh, but uh we have 5 minutes to the top of the hour and Bill, you have like this whole TEDx presentation thing to chop vegetables for. Um, uh, so yes. since that starts in an hour, we will wrap up and give you plenty of times to chop some veggies. Um, so anything you guys want to add, uh, about the Kickstarter or anything before we say goodbye? You guys rock. Thank you for supporting oh. us. Thank yeah. you for supporting Mobius. Thank we're you. We're for you. And Thank we want to make good games for you and play with you. Yes. Yes. Uh, absolutely. Thank you very much. Um, this has been a labor of love for me, and I am so excited to get it out and let people see it finally. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, chat, for being here and being so engaged and interactive. We love that. Uh, and thank you guys for spending two hours of your Saturday with me, um, hanging out and talking. And we'll see you, don't forget, Monday night or Monday during the day, 1 p.m. Mm -hmm. Mountain, right? Yes. Uh, for a game of uh, Prowlers and Paragons. So we'll be right here on this channel. Don't miss it. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Peace. Nocturne by Night is the villain's supplement to the blood and justice setting of Prowlers and Paragons. That was a lot of words, let's break it down. Prowlers and Paragons Ultimate Edition is the core rulebook for this superhero game system. Simple system, simple character creation, designed to let you get in and play quickly. Blood and Justice Welcome to Nocturne is a setting book, similar to D&D's Explorer's Guide to Wildmount. Nocturne is a Gotham-esque city, dark, gritty, dystopian, all the major sites and players of the city are there to help you build your campaign. 
Nocturne by Night is a villain's supplement, or what I like to call oops, all villains. Think of it like the monster manual for the Nocturne setting, but all the baddies are also playable. Whether you set them against your players or play the baddies yourself, this book is what you need. The bundle reward tier gets you all three books so you can hit the ground running in your campaign. 